I'm walking a puppy this morning that has a lot of confidence. He doesn't have a lot of leash experience with me right now, so he has a lot of interest in what's going on around him. And not a ton of interest in me. And that's okay. This is how a lot of walks with puppies start, especially once you get to about four to five to six months of age, which is the age this puppy is. He's five months old. And there are some things that I can do to make walking with him successful and enjoyable. And there are some things I can do that will make it miserable for us both. The first and most critical piece of walking this puppy in a pleasurable and not miserable way is to have a long leash. The leash I'm using is mesh web, 20 feet long. It's cotton, so it doesn't hurt my hands. And it's not a flexi lead. And here's why. I'm using this long leash so the puppy has plenty of opportunities to explore the world, explore his environment on our walks. If I only have a six foot leash, this exploring puppy is going to be coming up on the end of six feet every other step and I'm going to be in a contest with him about pulling or not pulling and walking near me or not walking near me and being a general pain in the arse for this puppy. Why is he going to want to tune in to me? Why is he going to want to cooperate with me and be a team member with me? When all I do is fuss and fuss and keep him from his most natural inclinations. So by having a 20 foot lead on here, on this puppy, I achieve two things. One, he can explore a lot of things on our walk without getting in a situation where he's pulling. But really importantly, somewhere in that 20 foot radius is a place where he may turn and look at me and check in and be like, hey, is everything good? And if I'm paying attention, that's the moment that I can reinforce his attention on me with praise, maybe treats and that's so much more effective than trying to make him pay attention to me. You can't make a dog pay attention to you. You might be able to one or two times and then they just chalk it up to you being unreasonable and I just need to ignore you more. So, long line, puppy gets to explore without my interference most of the time the puppy has an opportunity to check in with me so i can praise for giving spontaneously giving his attention to me and then if he does get to the end of the leash and he starts pulling you know maybe to get to something or he's seen a squirrel in the next yard or a deer or a cat or a kid or who knows. I mean, this puppy went and tried to pull at the end of the leash to go check out somebody with a lawnmower, for goodness sake. So when you're using a long line, they get out to the end of that 20 feet and there's something that they're pulling for or whatever they're going to be more sensitive to you moving away from them because you are their safety. They know that even if they're trying to pretend like, like you're not that important. So if they're 20 feet away from you and you start to move away from them, a puppy is going to have a little more insecurity triggered and think, oh, actually I'd rather be with mom than on my own out here past the 20 feet I'm used to. And then when they come towards you, you can praise them. Good puppy, good come. Maybe that's when you start throwing in a recall command. 
because the puppy already wants to do the thing you want to assign the word to. The puppy is paying attention to you. The puppy gets to you. Oh, it's a party. Get down low. I pet the puppy. Maybe I give him cookies. So I'm also now teaching the puppy a response of how to come back to me if necessary. So then if we're in a case where now the puppy's seen a deer and he's trying to take off after the deer and that means he hit the leash, end of the leash kind of hard because I'm just going to stand still and let that happen because I, I, can't, I can't prevent a 25-pound or any pound puppy from taking off, but I can be ready for when they hit the end of the leash and they get startled by that because they don't have these constant interactions of pulling on the leash from being six feet long. The tension on the collar is new and it's rare, so it has significance. And it often will make the puppy turn and look at me. And then I can start that process of praise and And reinforcing that the puppy has their attention on me as I keep moving away. I'm not going to scold the puppy for being interested in the world. I don't want to discourage the puppy from being curious and checking out the things in his world. That will teach an insecure puppy that the world is dangerous. And it will teach a secure and confident puppy that I'm a jerk. Sorry for the sound of the trash truck going by. So, the long line is the most important part of teaching a puppy, any dog really, how to walk on a leash. So, I encourage you to use it, take advantage of it, Oh, but why not a flexi? Why not one of those leashes that wraps up in a nice little handle that's real convenient and easy? Well, there's a few reasons. The training reason is because even though the length of the leash is variable, the device is spring-loaded. So there's no time really that the leash is ever loose or slack. So the puppy can't learn the signals from the collar nearly as effectively because even though it's just low grade tension, it's still the equivalent of pulling at least a little all the time, no matter what length you have it. Um, And so And it's unpredictable. You know, my 20-foot line, they get to the end of it at 20 feet. Or they can feel when they're getting to the end of it if I've collected some of it up because we're on a busy street or somebody's walking by or something like that. They can feel the difference in the leash and they know what those signals mean over time and consistency. But they don't have any of that with a flexi. Uh, The other thing about flexies is they're really unsafe, actually. Um, Most of them are nylon. And, you know, your dog goes running by you and you're wearing shorts, God forbid. Or you, for some reason, try to grab that line because you need to get more control of the dog. And you've got a dog who's powerful or fast. Until you have seen some of the wounds that a flexi lead can give to you or your dog, you think that they're safe. If you have a flexi lead, I invite you to just throw it away. I'm not even going to invite you to give it away to a shelter or anything like that. Because then it's just in the hands of somebody else. Who doesn't know how dangerous it could be? And you could be setting somebody or some dog up for a pretty bad injury. Now, I know plenty of people who have multiple dog lifetimes with flexi leads and they've never had a problem like this. 
but I've worked in animal hospitals and I have taught obedience classes and I have seen these wounds myself. And no, they won't happen to everyone. But if it happens to you, it's going to be bad. So, fair warning. Keep yourself, keep your dog safe. And remember that convenience comes with a price. And the best leash for training your dog to walk and for walking your dog is a 20-foot leash. I hope that was helpful. The puppy and I have finished our walk, and that's why you hear the other dog barking in the background. So I'm going to be done for now, and I'll come back with some more thoughts and lessons in the future. Thanks for listening. It's Leslie Schreiner. Bye-bye.